a very warm welcome to all the students uh, in this lecture we are going to learn about a special kind of nfa which is called as nfa with null transitions which is denoted with uh, these three notations okay now uh, as we all know that in alc the null symbol is written in different ways on different books by different authors so some authors they use this caret to denote a uh, null symbol some uh, books you will find a lambda being used to denote the null symbol and in some books epsilon is used to denote the null symbol and as a result this null nfa as we call it can be written as uh, caret hyphen nfa or sometimes they will write nfa first then hyphen then null both ways then uh, epsilon nfa or nfa hyphen epsilon or lambda nfa or uh, nfa hyphen uh, lambda okay so uh, this is also called as nfa with null transitions if you are using this symbol it is called as nfa with lambda transitions if you are using this symbol for null and it is called as nfa with uh, epsilon uh, transitions so what i will do is i will always call it as nfa with null transitions and i will use this notation here okay now uh, what is this nfa okay so it is a special type of automata and it is more flexible than your usual nfa okay uh, however these automatas they also don't have auxiliary memory and their operation is just like normal nfa so as we have seen earlier in uh, normal nfa normal dfa there was no auxiliary memory and uh, the automata could remember the things by changing the state uh, uh, changing the states right similarly here in this automata also there is no auxiliary memory and the operation of these automata it is just like your normal nfa then what is the main difference the main difference however lies in the fact that unlike unlike the normal nfa uh, null nfa it supports null transitions okay there are some transitions uh, which are made on reading null symbol okay which simply means transitions which are made on reading no symbol at all null symbol right so it is called as null transition now power of null nfa is exactly equivalent to that of dfa okay and they say that the set of languages that can be recognized by a dfa can only be recognized by null nfa too okay now let us head on to the definition of this null nfa uh, a null nfa is a five tuple okay uh, like your normal nfa this is also five tuple uh, m equal to q sigma q not a and del where q is uh, q, all these have their usual meanings now what are the meanings capital q always denotes uh, the set of all the possible finite states in the automata sigma denotes the input alphabet q not always denotes the start symbol a denotes the set of final states and del denotes the set of uh, transitions so uh, these tuple values are same as that of nfa okay also uh, we had seen in nfa that q and sigma okay they are finite sets okay and q not belong to capital q that means q not is one of the states of all the possible states capital q and a is a subset of q that means set of final states are also within the set of all the possible finite states of automata so up till this the definition is exactly same as your nfa what is the difference now please recall the transition function of nfa uh, so this is the transition function for nfa okay uh, as you can see transition function is basically a cross product of uh, state over an input and there are two raised to q possibilities for the transitions if there are q number of states then two raised to q possibilities of transitions this is the definition of normal nfa now in our uh, null nfa okay the definition is almost same okay if you can compare these two the definition is almost same apart from this one character and that is a null character this simply means that in null nfa it's basically a cross product of input uh, of a state over input but here input is not only sigma there is also union there is also one special symbol that is null because input alphabet in uh, your null nfa can be uh, sigma 
and also there is one special alphabet which is not set of alphabet set and that special alphabet is called as null alphabet okay so that's the meaning of it now as an example you can just uh, see this diagram here the set of states capital q are 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so basically there are 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 7 there are basically seven states so capital q with seven input alphabet if you see then there is a transitions on reading a there is a transition on reading b so input put alphabet is a and b now you must be wondering what are these these are called as null transition that means the automata also makes a transition on reading nothing or null symbol okay so from state one you go to state two on reading null uh, also from state two on reading null you go to state three from state three on reading null you can go to state six Similarly, from state 1 on reading null, you go to state 4. From state 4 on reading A, you go to state 5. State 5 on reading B goes to state 6. And state 5 on reading null goes to 7. So, these are called as null transitions apart from the valid transitions. So, whichever automata, uh, it may not look like NFA. Now, for example, here, the, the, it, this does not look like NFA actually. Okay, because the definition of NFA that is from one state. Uh, on reading the same input symbol it should be able to go to more than one states but if you see here from one there is a null transition going to two and from that same one state there is a null transition going to four so with this regard i can consider this as nfa and since there are null transitions it becomes null nfa okay so you should always remember whichever nfa has null transitions into it it becomes a uh, null nfa okay now what is uh, capital A that is uh, what is the final state over here final state is 6 and initial state Q not in this case is 1 ok again I am just uh, <coughs> we are recollecting that the null uh, symbol can be uh, considered as caret lambda and uh, epsilon so uh, in different books uh, automate the same automata may be drawn with different ways for example wherever that this uh, null is there uh, caret is there uh, you could just see lambdas written everywhere or you could just see epsilons written everywhere but it actually is same okay so transitions are also called as either null transition or lambda transition or they are also called as epsilon transition okay we will be using term called as either lambda transition or null transition it is basically same uh, we go to the next concept that is called as closure of a state if p is a state in null nfa suppose p is a state in null nfa then closure of the state p which is denoted as uh, you can write caret and in bracket p so this caret and in bracket p it means closure of state p i told you this uh, input uh, the null symbols can be written in three different ways so either you can write uh, caret p or lambda p or epsilon p these are the three ways of writing closure of state p Similarly, in some uh, books uh, notations, they use a word called as closure. For example, here uh, they have written uh, lem uh, n uh, caret then closure in bracket p. So this is also called as null closure of p. Or some books they write like this, that is uh, lambda closure of p. Or in some books they write epsilon closure of p. Okay. So all this basically means closure of state p. You can use any of these. I will be using this particular notation. Uh, that is caret in bracket p okay but all other notations can be used in fact different books on alc use different notations we will be sticking to this particular notation okay now what is closure now uh, null closure of a state is set of states so basically null closure of any state will give you some set of states now which are these states the states that can be reached from this particular state only through null transitions okay so what is null closure of a state null closure of a state is set of states that can be reached from this particular state only through null transitions so you can consider this figure and let's uh, try out uh, uh, how uh, to find out the null closure of each state now suppose if somebody asks you uh, about say uh, first state so if i want to find out null closure of the first state one okay what this is going to give you uh, if you can see the diagram null closure of 1 means 
set of all states so which are the states that can be reached from this state 1 on only null transitions so all those have to be added okay but before we actually uh, write this uh, i would like to also tell you something for example whenever you have uh, say state 1 say on reading a it goes to state 2 and so on okay so this is a this state i'm talking about this state okay now here i have not written any null transition okay now what's the meaning of null transition that means uh, null transition always means from a particular state when nothing is read or null is read you should go to some other state or maybe you can go to the same state so whenever you now in this diagram i have not written i am not shown a null transition but you know this diagram is actually equivalent uh, to another representation and that is this state 1 on the reading a going to state 2 but when you write this state 1 state 1 can be also written like this this simply means that uh, from state 1 on reading nothing or null you remain in the same state now this thing is valid for all the states see uh, there are no self loop written for any of these states but then the, uh, when you don't write a self loop over any state it is by default understood that there is one self loop over each of these states with null transition okay because the definition says see from state 3 if you don't read any input symbol you are going to remain in the same state right so uh, this is implicit actually explicitly you can also write it like this from state 3 on reading null you remain in state 3 okay now since this is al al already understood now when when i write 2 it is understood that from 2 on reading null you remain in 2 so there is a hidden null transition uh, self loop uh, null transition on state 2 also there is a hidden self loop transition on state 1 also hidden uh, uh, self loop uh, transition null transition on 4 also so every state whichever state does not show any null transition has you should remember has a self loop over it with a null transition because the meaning is same it simply means from state 7 on reading null you remain you remain in the same state 7 okay now whether you show it whether you don't show it that's another story okay so even if you don't show sorry uh, even if you don't show that self loop okay it is understood okay so uh, as i was discussing about null closure of one so remember whenever you want to find out null closure of any state first and foremost that state should be added to the set of uh, uh, set of states why because null closure of any state firstly always gives you that same state itself okay what is the meaning of null closure? Null closure means these are the set of states that can be reached from that state through null transition. So if I want to find out null closure of 1, can I reach uh, this state 1 on null tr transition? Okay, can I from this state 1, can I reach 1 from 1, can I reach 1 on null transition? Yes, I just told you there is a hidden self loop and that's why this one is written here. Okay. Now, which are the other states that can be reached from this state 1 on null transition? That's the second question. So, always remember, whenever you want to find out closure of any state, first, that state itself should be added to the uh, null closure list because that state itself can be reached from that same state, self-loop on null transition. Which are the other states? So, now you see the diagram. Now, from 1 on reading null, can I go to 2? That means 2 can be reached from 1? Yes. So, I add 2 next from state 2 uh, further on reading null you can go to say state 3 which also means state 3 uh, which also means uh, this state 3 can be reached uh, from state 1 only through null transition yes because from 1 on null you can go to 2 and through 2 on reading null you can go to state 3 okay so that means state 3 is also reachable from state 1 uh, through null transition that's why 3 is also added so I will have 3 also being added. Next, uh, from 3 on reading null you can go to 6. Which simply means is 6 reachable from this state 1 only through null transition? Yes, because from 3 on null you go to 6. 2 on null you go to 3. 
1 on null you go to 2 that means 6 is reachable from 1 reading only null transition yes so 6 should be also added to the uh, set of states okay now when you go further from 6 on reading null you remain in 6 only because I told you from any state on reading null you remain in the same state now 6 is already added which are the other states where you can go from 6 on reading null there is no other state so I have to stop here okay but this uh, state 1 also has a null transition going to 4 we have just seen one branch we have to see the second branch also right so from state 1 on reading null you go to 4 also that means 4 is also reachable from 1 using uh, on reading null transition so don't you think 4 should be also added yes so 4 is also added now from 4 from 4 on reading null you don't go to any any other state apart from 4 itself and 4 is already added so there are no more states that are reachable from this one on null transition in this particular uh, branch as a result the final answer here is this so what we have found out null closure of 1 means these are all the states that can be reached from this state 1 on reading null so that is a null closure of state 1 in the same way uh, null closure of the second state say 2 okay without even thinking the very first thing what you need to do is that state 2 itself should be added to the set then from state 2 on reading null you can go to 3 so 3 should be added from 3 on reading null you go to 6 so 6 should be added but from 6 on reading null apart from 6 itself it does not go to any other state so null closure of 2 will be uh, 2 itself 3 and 6 only 3 states so 2 3 and 6 next is null closure of 3 okay now from state 3 first of all without even thinking you should add 3 itself to the null closure list then from state 3 okay from state 3 on reading null you can go to 6 so that means 6 should be added but from 6 on reading null you don't go to any other state apart from itself okay so 3 and 6 only two elements will be there in null closure list of so these are the only two states that can be reached from null closure of, uh, from state 3. Next we find out null closure of state 4. First without even thinking 4 should be added to the list. Now which are the other states that can be reached? Now from 4 on reading null can you go to any other state? No. There are no transition defined apart from 4. That's why null closure of 4 will have only one state and that is 4 itself. Okay that's why null closure of 4 will have only one state and that is 4 itself then null closure of 5 we have to calculate first of all 5 itself should be added to the list and see from 5 on reading null you can go to 7 also so 7 should be also added okay then null closure of 6 should be calculated first you have to add 6 to the list there are any more states from state 6 on reading null you don't go to any other state apart from itself so that's why only 6 will be the element of null closure agree so this is how null closure of 6 is calculated and finally null closure of 7 should be calculated so that will be uh, first 7 itself will be added to the list and as you can see in the figure from state 7 on reading null you don't go to any other state so only 7 will be the element of this null closure of a state so this is how null closure or epsilon closure or lambda closure of each state can be determined okay now what we have seen currently is null closure of one particular state sometimes you also have closure of set of states okay you sometimes have closure of some set of states now the closure of set of state it is determined as follows first closure of each state is determined suppose somebody is asking you what is closure of set of states for example in this example uh, in this uh, uh, example that we have already seen if i want to find out closure of two states that is uh, state say 4 and state 5 what is the 
closure of these two states okay so this uh, is called as closure of some set of states together i want to find out closure of 4 and 5 so how to find out first you need to find out closure of each state okay now closure of each state is already there so individually i should find out what is closure of 4 and what is closure of uh, 5 okay then union of the resulting set gives the resultant st uh, set of states for example uh, closure of say there is say i am assuming capital a capital b are some states of nfa uh, null nfa then closure of capital a comma capital b would give you closure of a individually union closure of b individually so in that in this uh, i'll apply this formula here so i want to find out what is closure of 4 comma 5 so this will be closure of 4 individually union closure of 5 individually and then we are going to find out what is closure of 4 now looking at the figure here uh, we already know closure of 4 is 4 itself so i will be writing 4 here union and individually what is the closure of 5 so looking at this we have already calculated what is closure of 5 closure of 5 is 5 comma 7 so i will write here 5 comma 7 then what is 4 union 5 comma 7 this will give you 4 comma 5 comma 7 so this is uh, how closure of each individual state is determined Okay, this is called as closure of set of states. Having understood what is closure of a state, having understood what is closure of set of states, next we come to a very important algorithm and this algorithm is called as null NFA to NFA conversion algorithm. Why this is important? Because uh, uh, whenever any null NFA is given to you, okay, using this particular procedure, you will be able to convert the given null NFA to an equivalent NFA. Okay, so uh, in the next lecture, I am going to solve a problem on this. Right now, I will be only covering the procedure to convert the given null NFA to NFA. The first step over here tells you all the states of null NFA capital M1 are added to the new NFA capital N. That means, unlike the previous procedure that we saw. NFA to DFA converger over here every state of null NFA will be state of NFA you will not have subset of states like what we did earlier okay so suppose this is the null NFA that we have it has 1 2 3 4 5 6 these are the states of your null NFA so when you're going to uh, find out equivalent NFA of this particular diagram no for that NFA also you will have the same states 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 and 7 okay you will not have combination of two states or you will not have a new state which was not present in null NFA or something like that okay so the first step tells you all the states in null NFA capital M1 are added to the new state uh, new NFA capital N okay second Input alphabet for the NFA is same as that of null NFA excluding null string. So again see if this is a diagram and you need to convert this null NFA to NFA. Second thing tells you that the input alphabet which is there for null NFA will be same as that of the resultant NFA. Except in null NFA you will have one extra input alphabet that is null. In normal NFA you will not have this null alphabet or null symbol because normal NFAs do not support null transitions okay this is very simple and very clear third the transition function is written as follows now this is a formula that you will have to remember to find out transitions okay so first thing what you have to do is uh, in the resultant NFA you are going to add this and all the states of null NFA as it is then input alphabet also will assume that it is same as what is given for null NFA next we will have to find out transition of each state over each input a so del of q comma a tells you we will have to find out transition of each state of the given null nfa over each input symbol a so this can be written as e closure of so first we will have to write e closure of del of okay e closure of state q comma a 
सो दिस फॉर्मूला नीड टू रिमेंबर वॉट इज डेल ऑफ क्यू कमा ए डेल ऑफ क्यू कमा ए कैन बी रिटर्न एज ई क्लोजर ऑफ द होल सब एक्सप्रेशन देन डेल ऑफ ई क्लोजर ऑफ स्टेट क्यू कॉमा ए नाउ दिस ई क्लोजर ऑफ स्टेट क्यू इज नथिंग बट क्लोजर ऑफ अ स्टेट क्यू यू मस्ट हैव ऑलरेडी फाउंड आउट दिस क्लोजर ऑफ द स्टेट क्यू ओके सो इन दिस रिगार्ड एज द एज आई विल शो यू इन द प्रॉब्लम वेन आई एम सॉल्विंग फर्स्ट थिंग वॉट यू आर गोइंग टू डू इज गिवन ए एन एफ ए यू आर गोइंग टू फाइंड आउट क्लोजर ऑफ ईच स्टेट एंड यू आर गोइंग टू कैलकुलेट एंड कीप दिस क्लोजर ऑफ ईच स्टेट सो वेन एवर यू आर गोइंग टू हैव दैन ट्रांजेक्शन ऑफ दैट स्टेट ऑन ए और दैट स्टेट ऑन बी देन इट विल बी ई क्लोजर ऑफ डेल ऑफ ई क्लोजर ऑफ क्यू कमाई देन ई क्लोजर ऑफ क्यू विल बी विल बी वॉट यू हैव ऑलरेडी कैलकुलेटेड द क्लोजर ऑफ दैट पर्टिकुलर स्टेट सो यू विल हैव द एलिमेंट्स so then del of those elements comma a and that way okay we will see so this is a very important formula which you need to remember okay so this is how the transitions will be calculated and finally see here initially a1 is equal to a <coughs> okay what is a and what is a1 a1 is set of states in the resultant uh, sorry uh, set of final states in the resultant nfa so a1 is the set of final states in your nfa that are designing and a is set of final state in the given enfa or null nfa okay so initially the we are assuming that final states of the resultant nfa are same as the final states of uh, the given uh, enfa and initial state q not is added to a1 okay and the state sorry not initial state i'm sorry and state q not is added to a1 if e closure of q not uh intersection a is not equal to not okay now i'll just tell you what exactly this means uh let's head on to the diagram here okay suppose we have suppose we have got you know uh for this null nfa assume that we have already uh, got the equivalent nfa now the one last question that we are having is which in in the resultant nfa uh, uh, that we have drawn of course the states will be same but the final state may not be same so which will be the final state of the resultant nfa so to find out that you need to find out in the given null nfa which is a final state 6 is a final state in the given nfa yeah, null nfa correct no 6 is the final state in the given null nfa okay now so for the resultant nfa that also will have the same states 1 2 3 4 5 6 which state will be the final state only state 6 or any other state also will be the final state so for that you have to uh, then see the null closures that you have just found out of each state now whichever state has in its e closure set this element 6 that state will be considered as the final state for example uh, you see when you calculated null closure of 1 it gives you element along with this 6 and what is 6 6 is the final state of null nfa so in the resultant nfa where 1 will be one of the states this one will have to make as final state why because it has an element of 6 similarly state 2 also will have to be made as final state of nfa because 2 here okay in the set of uh, in e closure set that we obtain uh, for this state 2 there is also 6 and 6 happens to be the final state of null nfa okay so state 2 also will be the final state in the nfa in the resultant nfa so also state 3 will be the final state in the resultant nfa why because in this set also there is 6 and 6 is a final state of null nfa but for this state 4 of nfa it does not have element called as 6 which is a final state of null nfa that's why 4 will not be the final state of nfa also 5 will not be the final state 6 will be the final state 7 will not be the final state so which will be the final states of nfa uh, suppose we come up with equivalent nfa over here the final states will be 1 2 3 and 6 okay so this this is the meaning of it okay so this is a small procedure that Uh, we are going to follow to convert the uh, given null nfa to nfa conversion so with this i conclude uh, for the current session in the next lecture we are going to see uh, uh, in fact we are going to solve a problem to convert the given nfa uh, null nfa to nfa
Thank you.